In this series of videos, we're going to talk about inventory, and I thought, what better way to start talking about inventory than to get a decent definition of inventory? So it's good to understand it. I, I googled for a definition, and this was sort of the, the best one I found. Uh, and it's on Investopedia, and it says, Definition of Inventory. The raw materials, work in process goods, and completely finished goods that are considered to be the portion of a business assets that are ready or will be ready for sale. Basically, when I think about inventory, especially when I think about it in the framework of an introduction to financial accounting, what I'm thinking about is any assets I own that I own for the express purpose of selling. So if you think about a retailer, it's the stuff they keep in stock, the stuff that's sitting on the shelf. So if I think about uh, Walmart of the world, it's all the stuff that's sitting on the shelf waiting for the customer to buy. And that's how I'd like to think of inventory, at least in this context. If you're doing managerial accounting, you'll worry about raw materials and work in process. We're going to think about it from the Walmart model. They buy a good, it's already ready to sell, and then they turn around and sell it. So they buy it at one price. They turn around and sell it at a higher price, and where Walmart makes money is that m point in the middle, right? They're buying at one price, they're selling for a higher price, and they make profits in the middle. Um, so, in fact, why don't we look at how Walmart might account for the most basic of transactions? Uh, so, let's say we're Walmart and we buy a pair of socks, and certainly. Uh, if we buy a pair of socks at one price, we're going to sell them at a higher price. So for the purpose of my example, let's say Walmart buys their socks for two bucks and sells them for five. So we're Walmart, we buy our socks for two bucks. It's January the 1st, and we go, all right, we bought socks. But of course, we don't call them socks. We call them inventory. And I'll just put it's socks in, ba in brackets. And in fact, Walmart would be much more specific than that. They wouldn't just say socks. They would say it's white Hanes tube socks, which is what I wear, or maybe some other uh, brand or pair. Uh, so anyway, they buy these white tube socks for two bucks. And let's assume they bought from their supplier for cash. In all likelihood, Walmart would actually buy on account and have a payable, but they would never buy one pair of socks at a time anyway. This is just to illustrate an example. So now it's January 2nd and Walmart wants to sell their socks, or they do sell their socks. No, they want to, they want to sell them right away. They, they do sell their socks on January 2nd. So he said if they buy them for two bucks, they're probably charging five, six, seven bucks. Let's assume though it's five bucks. So they get cash of five dollars from their customer, and that's how Walmart earns money. This is a revenue to them. And, and Walmart's revenue is called sales revenue, and any retailer's revenue is gonna be called sales revenue so they earn sales revenue of five dollars now that's good and that's all well and good except for we haven't tracked something very important when any retail company makes a sale to its customer not only do they have to record the fact that yes cash came into the till we sold something to our customer we've got sales revenue happening here we've also got to record the fact that our customer walks out of the store with a bag full of our stuff in this case, our customer walks out of the store with some of our socks. So I have to record the fact that I have less socks. I've got to credit my socks inventory to say, yeah, when that sale happened, my sock inventory went down by two bucks. Now, this is going to give rise to a new expense, and it's an expense we haven't talked about yet, and that expense is called cost of goods sold and so when Walmart sells its pair of socks it has a cost of goods sold of $2. Um, so the journal entry again whenever we're selling inventory is always going to be debit cash or accounts receivable, credit sales revenue, debit cost of goods sold and credit the inventory that we sold. And you can see looking at the revenues and expenses on this transaction uh, our sales revenue is the only revenue in here. Our cost of goods sold is the only expense. You can see taking revenues minus expenses, we made three bucks on the deal and our accounting system caught it. So this was a very simple example. And now I want to illustrate with another very simple example that this can get harder. And so I'm going to start a new example here. Again, if you didn't understand, you can pause and rewind and kind of go over that again. Um, but we're going to go through a more complex example here just to get a feel for the complexities of inventory. So let me get a new page. 
go up to the new page. There we are. And let's uh, let's go. So let's use the same socks situation. Walmart buys socks. It's January the first, and they debit their inventory uh, socks for, uh, and they buy them for two bucks. They're still planning to sell them for five, and so they credit cash uh, two bucks. Beautiful. Now let's say the socks don't sell and on January 2nd Walmart buys another pair of socks. Now again a ridiculous example Walmart would buy hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pairs of socks at a time but in this example they're buying them one pair at a time one day at a time. So they go to buy the socks and Hanes or Fruit of the Loom says you know what Walmart our cost of socks just went up we're gonna charge you two dollars ten cents and Mr. Walmart says well I'm selling them for five bucks two dollars and ten cents that ain't too bad fine I'll buy the socks for two dollars and ten cents and we debit inventory socks for two dollars and ten cents and we pay cash again Walmart probably would never pay cash but for the purpose of our example why not uh, so January 3rd rolls around and the two pairs of socks still haven't sold and Walmart decides I want to buy a third pair of socks and so they call their supplier and the supplier says you know what the cost today two dollars and fifty cents Walmart says I don't like it but okay again a silly example because Walmart has very strong negotiators they likely wouldn't take such a uh, a cost increase lightly but they do it in this example so they buy the socks for two dollars and fifty cents I know that might not look like a five but it is credit cash two dollars and fifty cents so now Walmart has these three pairs of socks sitting on the shelf the customer comes in and they buy a pair of socks okay so you know scrolling down we know how to sell socks debit cash credit sales debit cogs credit inventory so let's do that the customer comes in on January 4th and they buy a pair of socks so we're Walmart and we say yay we got cash five bucks uh, and of course that's sales revenue to us of five bucks now we've also got to say some socks left with our customer so I'm going to credit inventory for, well, we'll talk about that in a second, and debit cost of goods sold, which I'll here uh, henceforth abbreviate as COGS, C-O-G-S. Uh, so now the question, and this is really the million dollar question of inventory is, how much should I debit my COGS and credit my inventory for? Again, I have three different pairs of socks, one at two bucks, one at 210, one at 250 how much should I uh, charge to my cost of goods sold? That's the question and the answer is there's a lot of correct answers here. It depends on the accounting policy of the company. So when I look at this situation I could say okay well if I was using milk if I go to the supermarket and I buy milk I notice that they always try to sell the oldest milk first so somebody like me reaches around to the back and pulls out the, the fresh milk but you know the uh, companies selling milk and groceries they try to sell the oldest stuff first and there's a term for that if you're trying to sell your oldest inventory first uh, the terminology is FIFO and FIFO stands for first in first out and if I have an inventory policy that matches that I might want to account for my inventory using FIFO so if I'm using FIFO first in FI first in FO first out if I'm using FIFO in this scenario my oldest socks are the ones I would account for as having been sold. So if I were using FIFO, my COGS and my credit to inventory would be two bucks because I would just take the oldest item, which would be January 1st. Now, the flip side of FIFO, you probably can guess, is called LIFO. If FIFO is first in, first out, LIFO stands for last in, first out. And it's the opposite. So FIFO says we sold the first one, LIFO says we sold the most recent one. So under LIFO, which we'll talk more about in a minute, we would charge our cost of goods sold $2.50. Now there's other methods available to us too. Some of you may be looking at this and saying, hey, just take an average. Very legitimate method. It's called the weighted average method and we'll look at that one next. So if I were doing weighted average, weighted average 
I would look at these items and I would go, okay, 2 plus 210 plus 250, that's 660 divided by 3. My average cost in inventory is 220. I added them up. That's why my last one was 250. I wanted it to be an even number. So 220 is my weighted average. Beautiful. So far, so good. Um, one other method exists uh, that we're going to be concerned with and that I would be concerned with in an intro to accounting class. And that method is called specific unit identification. And I'll just call it specific unit ID here. And specific unit says, well, which specific unit did the customer buy? The customer came in and he picked one off the shelf. Which one of these three did he or she pick? Was it the first, the second, or the third? Because that matters. And if I know if it was the second, then I'm going to charge 210. If I know it was the third, I'm going to charge 250. Whichever one it was, that's the one we sold. Now, specific unit identification is really used for companies that trade on unique products or companies that choose trade in big ticket items. So if I run an antique store and I have three antique tables, I'm not going to say, oh, let's take the average of the antique tables. No, no, no. I'm going to just take the, um, I'm going to say which specific antique table sold. Same thing if I own a car dealership, like a Mercedes-Benz dealership. I'm not going to say, oh, what's the average of my, uh, you know, Mercedes compressors that I, I sold this month? No, no, no. You're going to look at each Mercedes-Benz separately. You're going to charge cost of goods sold for each one based on some vehicle ide identification number. You're going to track each one separately. In those cases, use specific unit ID. For companies that sell socks, though, they're much more likely to use FIFO, LIFO, or weighted average. Now, here's where we get a bit of a difference. I'm, I'm a Canadian accounting instructor, and uh, uh, my, my friends in, in Europe and my friends overseas that are uh, under IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, follow similar rules to Canadian GAAP, and those rules state that FIFO, weighted average, and specific unit identification are all okay, but LIFO is not. Now, our cousins to the south, our American cousins, LIFO is absolutely okay for you. But because of that, my, my focus here is supporting my own class. I'm going to hone in on FIFO and weighted average specifically in the next couple of videos and show you how to deal with them. Now, you're in luck because if you can understand FIFO, LIFO is really easy. LIFO is just logically follows. It's, it's, if you get how to do FIFO, you'll get how to do LIFO. So I'm going to focus on FIFO and weighted average. I'm going to leave LIFO off because, again, it's not... Uh, allowed under international standards, it's not allowed under Canadian rules, and that's really the focus, uh, and that's my primary audience here. So we'll leave it there. Our next video will walk through an example of how a company might deal with uh, FIFO method accounting record keeping.